my testimonies. Would you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Christopher Adia. I am nine years old and I am standing with Bishop Stefan and Pastor Adia. Yes, he is uh, our son and like I said, he is uh, the, the subject of our testimony today. Uh, it all started when uh, uh, we were surprised by the news uh, that we were pregnant. It was actually 19 weeks and we did not know uh, that we were pregnant. Many of you will remember I said Pastor Alec calls the Lord Jehovah my surprise. Well, it is because of this man. Uh, he was the surprise. But uh, two weeks um, after that, when we went to the doctor, just the bad news that we did not anticipate was said by the doctor. And uh, they told us that we will have to terminate the pregnancy because uh, there was 96% of chance that uh, he would have Down syndrome. And uh, they told us that it was better uh, so that we terminate uh, the pregnancy. They asked us to go and think about it. But of course, uh, we knew that Jehovah had not given us the wrong kind of surprise. So we didn't have to think much. We uh, believed that indeed um, we will not go that path. Uh, and another thing again that the doctor said was that the head was abnormally big. She thought that it was because the head was full of water. And that was uh, another reason why she thought it would be better uh, to take to terminate the pregnancy. She even mentioned the age uh, of my wife, saying that it is probably because of uh, an advanced age. That's why uh, the baby is having uh, the fetus at that time is having so um, many uh, issues. And uh, we we were faced with a decision to uh, to make. It was either we terminate or we um, continue with the pregnancy, whatever the outcome would be. And a third option was given to us to do amniocentesis, which is actually just to be able to take a sample of uh, amniotic fluid using a hollow needle that uh, you uh, put in the uterus. Uh, just to check for uh, abnormalities in uh, the developing a fetus. But even that one was running a lot of risk. So because of that, we said no third option, uh, definitely no first option for the doctor, which was to terminate the pregnancy. We will believe that the Lord will bless us with that altar child. So uh, we went to the house of the Lord and our man of God, as prophetic as he is usual, uh, as usual, uh, began at the end of our uh, service to make prophetic declarations. And I remember my wife was sitting at the very back of the church um, and the man of God went ahead in the declarations and said, the doctor told you to terminate the pregnancy, but I decree and I declare you should not do it for the Lord your God will surprise you and do, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but what he said uh, vividly that I remember is that the doctor told you to terminate the pregnancy, but you should not do so. And not only we grabbed that word and believed God, we went ahead to sow a seed. At that time, we were jobless. So to be able to sow a seed of 1,000 uh, rands was a lot of money for us. So we sent the seed and we trusted that God will uh, see us through. Uh, fast forward uh, after uh, when the time uh, came, you know, 35 weeks, uh, the doctor will tell us, I, I don't understand because it seems now that all the measurements are correct and uh, the head of the child has gone back to normal. And that, of course, for us was already a sign that God had done something supernatural for us and we began to rejoice. But because the measurements were never too sure, uh, we never knew when he would come. It was March, it was February, it was March. Finally, he came on the 25th of February of that year. And uh, as um, 
the doctor delivered him, uh, one of the things that we noticed with the baby was that uh, on his head there was like a wound that was not fresh but was still soft as if something had been done not so long ago. And then when we showed the doctor, this is what the doctor said jokingly. Well, it looks like um, the baby was operated on while still in the womb. She said it jokingly, but people of God, we do believe that indeed that is what happened and that was the miraculous power of our God. That big head that was full of water, God had to do something about it in the womb. And this is the sign, you know, um, until today, you can see right in this area, this is what, uh, 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 only, uh, at his birth, it was still reddish and soft. And that was the reason why we were concerned. And the doctor said, no, it looks like, um, you know, an operation had been done on him while he was in the womb. We believe that God indeed did something. And uh, our boy came out, no Down syndrome, no um, issue whatsoever. And his APGAR score was 10 out of 10. All our other two kids, it was 9 out of 10. But for him, because God wanted to prove a point, it was 10 out of 10. And we uh, took our boy, uh, went back with him, you know, praising God for what he had done. And we just celebrate God until today. I'm going to continue with this testimony, but I'm just going to allow Joshua um, uh, to go. And if you can just say bye-bye to everyone. Goodbye, everyone. All right. There you go, my boy. People of God, um, there are so many things to say about, about this boy. But after a while, um, though every other thing was okay with him, we saw that he could not speak. Uh, there was a, a, a problem with his speech. And uh, we began to ask ourselves, is there another issue or another problem with him? Um, so until he was about two, two and a half, he still could not uh, speak. And we were just also seeing a few issues with his uh, behavior uh, at that point in time. So uh, we took him to school at three years old, uh, but they told us that there were a lot of issues with him. And we began to thank God, the one who gave us a miracle concerning this child. We need you to perform another miracle again. And uh, they told us that uh, he was um, uh, suffering from autism, you know, after they had uh, uh, done an assessment on him, that he was a, a, a autistic, that's number one. Number two, they told us that it wa he was uh, asocial, meaning that uh, he had a behavior that will not allow social interaction, and that he will be either inconsiderate of others or hostile with um, others. And we could see some signs and we were wondering, God, please come to our rescue. And, um, you know, one night, uh, Pastor Alet had a dream. And in that dream, um, I will not go into the details because we have to, you know, protect uh, some people. But in that dream, we saw uh, that there was an evil uh, hand behind all this. Uh, there was a type of initiation uh, through covenant of marriage in the spiritual realm that was going to be done to him uh, or with him. And my wife was so disturbed that at around five o'clock in the morning that day, she wrote a message to her father, Pastor Africa, saying, I must see you today, today. And she managed to see the man of God in between two services. I wasn't there myself. But then when I came back, because there was no change, uh, there were just some disturbing thing. If a, 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 um, a plane will, will fly close or if there will be any other, you know, very strong noise, you know, Joshua will 
do this, you know, and he will run and go hide himself in a corner and, and just cry uncontrollably every time there was a strong sound. And it was breaking our hearts. We were wondering, God, we need you to come through. So this time I went as well with uh, Pastor Alet and Joshua to see our men of God because we knew we had a prophet. We went to the prophet. I remember that day, the child that was all over the place. At some point when the man of God was trying to pray for him, you know, there was a, a Fanta, a, a can of Fanta right there. And he just had to, you know, hit it. And it was all over uh, uh, Apostle Alf's uh, a pair of jeans. And we were so embarrassed, but the man of God told us it's not a problem. And he will pray for him and will try to distract him and then pray for him and lay hands. Long story short, after that while, Apostle Alf uh, went to Kinshasa for a seminar and then told me son i want us to pray fast together for two days for your son i perceive god is about to do something we fasted uh, him in kinshasa myself in johannesburg for two days and after the second day the man of god uh, sent me um, he called me it was not a, a, a voice note he called me from kinshasa can you see the love of the man of god my father and called me and said, son, this is the dream that I had. And I saw you and I running, running very fast. I didn't see anything else. And I understand that I need to go one more day of fasting for your son. This time, not you, just I. And the man of God went for a third day. And after that, lo and behold, we began to see the change. Our boy at three and a half, you know, just a few months after his third birthday, began to speak. You know, at school where they had already given up on him, we began to see some change, you know, and it got so, you know, so much better than it was now a problem to keep Joshua from answering all the questions. After a while, uh, of course, he uh, had to leave uh, kindergarten and he had to go now uh, to um, grade R reception. Uh, and uh, we then enrolled him at um, Spark School uh, Castle. And then they told us, but um, why don't we uh, just put him in grade one? Of course, my wife and I were so worried after every other issue that we had with uh, Joshua, now that things are going well, you want him to skip an entire grade and not do reception and go to grade one. And emotionally, was he ready? We remembered everything that was said, but you know what, the devil is a liar. God has a plan. And when he was put in grade one, lo <laughs> and behold, this boy was doing so brilliantly. He was, I think the second in the entire grade when it came to mathematics, you know, Zulu, English, literacy, whatever, he was doing so well. And until this day, this boy is an amazement unto us. He is a living miracle. If we want to think about the goodness of the Lord, all we have to do is look at Joshua. If we want to indeed see and say that the God of Africa is a good God, all we got to do is look at Joshua. He is growing and there are so many uh, specific things that the man of God once told me concerning the life of this child. And I understand now why the entire warfare around his conception, around his birth, and even after his birth, you know, the devil never gave up, but we also never gave um, up. And today we have a full-fledged testimony to the honor and glory of the Most High God. We win, they lose. If you were blessed by the 